Greetings, royal family. I am back, obviously. All right, royal family, we need to talk. Um, Iyanla is back, and she apparently has unfinished business, and she is taking care of said unfinished business. Honey, um, I don't know if you saw, but our, uh, the Mitchell brothers are back, and yikes. Um, so... The Mitchell brothers are five, five brothers who, um, were in and out of different foster homes because they were born to a crack addicted mother. And I think the, our drug addicted mother, and I think the father was on drugs as well. The mother was very young. So they were all scattered all over the place in and out different foster homes. Some of them met each other in, um, uh, different foster homes and it's just basically a, just a lot. It really is a lot. So if you saw last season, the Mitchell brothers, I think, uh, Iyanla did like a three part, um, sit down with them, with their father and their mother. They also have an older sister, uh, who was not raised by the mother, was not raised with them, but she was raised by her grandmother. So the Mitchell brothers are back and Iyanla basically wants to catch up with them and see what's good. Like any enhancements, any setbacks, what's up? So the Mitchell, oh my gosh, it's so sad because, and hopefully you've seen it. Um, if not, I suggest you definitely take a look. It's a lot. And it's a shame because these men were exposed to so much dysfunction from the time that they were born. They were born into dysfunction. So they don't know anything other than dysfunction. Um, the second oldest, he's in and out of jail. You know, he's having a hard time. Iyanla sat down with him. That's the one with the braids. I don't remember his name. Um, Iyanla, he's having a hard time, you know, on their one-on-one -on -one because he has kids. And his 12 year old son, he said his 12 year old son basically is exhibiting the same type of behaviors that he himself was exhibiting when he was younger. You know what I mean? And he's saying that his child's mother really doesn't want to be around, be with him or doesn't really want him around the kids too much because of his past. You know, he was hustling on the street, in and out of jail, so on and so forth. So it's just rough and it's such a shame because they're, like I said, they don't know anything other than dysfunction. So Iyanla sits down with the five brothers, um, the sister, Kizzy, and also their mother. And it's a bunch of he said, she said, they're going back and forth. Michael Jr., who was the oldest one, he spazzed out because one of the brothers, they don't talk. And one of the brothers said that he's not interested in anything that, you know, his brother has to say. Michael Jr., he's the oldest one. And he just blacked out. You know, Michael Jr. blacked out. He slammed the teeth, banged on the table. Iyana's trying to get the other brother to understand he's lonely. He needs attention. And, you know, when they sat down with the mother and the sister, before the mother even came out, Kizzy, she's walking off because of all of this. He said, she said, nobody's being honest. You know, one of the younger brothers is saying, oh, you know, this one's lying. This one's not telling the truth. It's just a, a cluster of dysfunction. And the mom came out, you know, they were all going back and forth. Oh, mom, you said you don't like this person. Well, you told me you don't like this person. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I saw Iyanla was actually on Sway in the morning, Sway's, um radio show and she stated that they at when she you know herself like yelled and told everybody to shut up you know you're not going to act like a bunch of park apes iyana said on the radio with sway that they edited out a lot and she told the family after she yelled and told them to stop you know act they're not going to act like a bunch of park apes she said to them you see how that looks like basically kind of trying to show the family how the dysfunction looks like you guys are coming up in here. You say you want help. You guys are dressed in your suits. Everybody's looking cute, but you're just acting out of character, out of character. And, and to Iyanla, it was out of character, but I'm pretty sure that Iyanla understands that they don't know anything other than dysfunction. You know, the boys, all of them pretty much were sexually abused and this had to have stemmed from somewhere like the mother. We can all sit and blame the mother. The mother's no good. And, 
you know, of course she has to take responsibility for this, but I'm interested in seeing Iyanla sitting down with the mother next week um, or this Saturday because the mother is going to talk about when she was a little girl, what type of abuse she endured. See, that's what I want to get to the nooks and crannies of this because this is something that's like passed down. She never got help for her abuse. Her mother probably was abused. And you know, listen, sometimes people do the best they can and it's, a, it's people are gonna judge you whether you do right, whether you do wrong in their eyes, whether you do good, whether you do, do bad. But I just really wish that a lot of people had more eyes to see that the way that these, these young men are acting out, it stems from somewhere. Like nobody just wakes up and says, well, a lot of people don't. Most people don't wake up and say, you know what? I'm just going to be a street hustler. I'm going to be a criminal. I'm going to exhibit dysfunctional behaviors. It had to have stemmed from somewhere. And it's just sad. It's just really, really sad. And I just love the work that Iyana is doing. Um, this is free therapy for me because sometimes, you know, even though I can't relate to this specific situation, um, that the Mitchell family is going through. Iyala always drops jewels and she always says things that I can apply to my life. And hopefully if you guys watch, you can do the same. So that's therapeutic and it's for free. I mean, you know, um, but I'm really, really, really anticipating Iyala sitting down with the mother of these, uh, these boys and, and girl, um, because I want to hear what she had to endure you know what I mean? And if she, again, if she never got help for her situation, you're going to have kids. You're going to pass on that dysfunction because it's all you know. So I don't know. I just, I, I admire Iyanla. You know what I mean? I've admired Iyanla for years. I was introduced to her by my mom um, way before she even met up with Oprah and was sitting on Oprah's stage once a week or two to three times a week. So I read a few of her books when I was a young gal. So I just really like her angle. Uh, she does get a lot of backlash, but I like how she lets it roll off her back. She, very, she seems down to earth. Like in interviews, she's fun, realistic, you know what I mean? And I like the fact that she talks about a lot of her mistakes and doesn't come across as like self-righteous and know it all and you know, you can't do this. You can't do that. She can relate to a lot of this dysfunction because she herself has lived through a lot of dysfunction, probably sim you know, very similar. And she herself, she always talks about the mistakes that she's made. You oftentimes hear her say, you know, I've done that. Like I've done it. So I, I get it. I get it. I've done that. So I think that's a large part of why she's so effective and why she has a reputation as someone who can help you know, give people the tools to heal because she's not like, she doesn't try to hide the fact that she's made mistakes, lots of them. You know what I mean? She acknowledges her mistakes and I, and I really, really respect that because you got so many people who, you know, they sit on their high horse or they use whatever means to judge other people, to act like they're better than, they point the finger, you shouldn't do this, you know what I mean, you shouldn't do that. And I don't think that that's an effective way to get through to adults, you know what I mean? Especially adults that are dealing with a lot of physical abuse uh, or have been physically abused, psychological and emotional trauma. Like if you don't know how, you don't, if you yourself don't have the tools to help fix anything with anyone, just keep your mouth shut. That's how I feel. Cause otherwise it's nothing but judgment. You're not really trying to help. You know what I mean? You're just trying to say things to make yourself sound good. But anyway, that's a whole nother topic, but yeah, tell me what you think about the Mitchell brothers. I mean, did you see them the first time when they came on? Um, what did you think about this, uh, this second meeting? I guess it's going to be two parts and I could say a lot. I could say this one is an instigator. That one is, is an instigator. This one comes across as they're this and that, but at the end of the day, they are obviously different. They've had similar, if not all the same experiences, but this is a perfect example of like 
people processing the same trauma and abuse differently. Like no two people are the same, not even identical twins. You're not the same, you process things differently. I'm really rooting for them though, but I do feel like it's gonna take intense, intense, constant uh, therapy and work. Like Iyala is big on that. You got to do the work. She will give you the tools. She's not waving some magic wand and poof, you're fixed. You know, people make jokes. Oh, Iyala don't fix nothing. Iyala don't fix nothing. And she basically allows you to take accountability for what you can't, what you have done and what you can do now in the moment. And I feel like we had a lot more leaders or elders or uh, professionals in this field, you know, reminding people that it is possible for you to take responsibility for the now, you know what I mean? People would be better off instead of, oh, blaming this or this person did this to me or uh, this is the reason why I can't do this or the enemy is stopping me so I can't do this, you know what I mean? We that's very dangerous. You know what I mean? When you have the tools, you have, someone has to instruct you on how to do it. Someone also has to give you the tools to do it and remind you and encourage you that you can do it so that everything can be set in motion. This, this episode was intense. Was I surprised by anything? No, because I mean, you know, they look great. I mean, I'm glad to see that they were all alive. You know, they may not be well mentally and emotionally, but I'm glad to see that they were all alive. No one went out and did anything. One of the brothers said that he wanted to kill himself. And that just breaks my heart because you can look at someone and they can be well put together or they can be, oh, you just, they're just going through things. You know, it is what it is. And you really never know what is going on in the mind of someone. So he said he just wanted to end it all. And he just needs constant reassurance. All of them, all of us do. We need constant reassurance that we have somebody to lean on. We can receive encouragement. We, there's help available to everybody. And I just really hope that anybody who feels similar to um, the Mitchell brother with the, with the braids, I can't remember his name. You know, you feel like you want to end it. You feel like you want to kill yourself. Like you, you have to get help. Like you have to get help. You should want to live because we all have a purpose here. Even this, this, this episode, this is going to touch somebody. This is going to encourage somebody. This is going to make somebody reach out to someone to offer help, to get help. You know what I mean? And I just feel like I, like I said, I like the work that Miss Iyanla is doing and I just wish her good health, mental and physical, uh, abundance, mental and physical and i just pray that like whatever blessings that she may not get the opportunity to see or receive while she's here it passes on down to her to her next of, of kin and it's a wonderful thing that she's doing and she was definitely called to do this like this was her calling and there was so part one you know kind of got you know little bit lukewarm it's gonna get hot next week and i'm looking forward to just learning getting something out of it that maybe i can apply to my life or words that i could use to encourage someone else's life so you know yala yelled a little bit but it's all right she's human you know what i mean and she genuinely cares you can tell she genuinely wants to help and i feel that she has a connection with them because she's familiar with them. They're back. So hopefully we can make some headway with part two. Uh, let me know what you guys think. What is your opinion as far as the tactics that Iyanla uses? Um, do you watch the show? You know, uh, and also what have you learned since watching Iyanla fix my life? I think this is the sixth season. So within six seasons, like, is there anything profound that she said that you kind of like, you know, use to encourage yourself or encourage others. I'm all about positive vibes, man. I like having fun. I like to laugh, I like to joke, but a simple, kind, simple word or offering somebody some sort of assistance can really, really, really impact somebody for a long time and change them for the better. So I'm going to be tuning in next week. I mean, I keep saying next week. I'm going to be tuning in on Saturday. Hopefully you guys will too. And when part two of Unfinished Business on Iyanla Fix My Life, you know, uh, wraps up, I'll definitely be, uh, be back with another review. So let me know what you think, Royal Family. 
this was real. It wasn't heavy. It wasn't too heavy, but it was good. It was, it was really good. And I'm just looking forward to seeing progress within them. You know, like I really am looking forward to seeing progress. So Royal family that wraps it up for me. So until next time, peace.